Because I've always loved weird things. I remember when I was a little boy, people used to say to me, Alan, you're so weird. Why can't you be like other people? Well, I thought that was just plain dull, like having the same thing for dinner every day. And as is well said, variety is the spice of life. So you will indeed find this place uh, rather strange. And some of the things that are weird are weird because they are just obvious and nobody ever thinks of them. Some of the most fascinating scientific discoveries have been made by people who called ordinary common sense in question. Like anybody can see that the earth is flat and people know it's flat. And calling that fundamental assumption in question is really the beginning of geography. And when I think over the weirdest of all things I can think of, you know what it is? Nothing. The whole idea of nothing is something that has bugged people for centuries, especially in the West. Because we have a saying in Latin, ex nihilo nihil fit, which means that out of nothing comes nothing. You can't, in other words, get something out of nothing. And it's occurred to me that this is a fallacy of tremendous proportions that lies at the root of all our common sense, not only in the West, but in many parts of the East as well. And it comes up as a kind of terror of nothing, a put down on nothing, on everything to do with nothing, everything associated with nothing, such as sleep, passivity, rest, and even the feminine principle is often equated with the negative principle. Although women's lib people don't like that kind of thing, but when they get through understanding what I'm going to tell you, I don't think they'll object. Because what has struck me is that nothing, the negative, the empty, is exceedingly powerful. I would say, not ex nihilo nihil fit, out of nothing comes nothing, but I would say you can't have something without nothing. But how do we basically begin to think about the difference between something and nothing? I can say, there is a cigar in my right hand and there is no cigar in my left hand. And so we get the idea of is here and isn't or empty here. But behind that, of course, lies the far more obvious contrast of solid and space. Now we tend to think of space as nothing. When we talk about the conquest of space, there's a little element notice of hostility in that phrase. But actually, we're talking about the conquest of distance. Space as such, that is to say, whatever it is that lies between the Earth and the Moon and the Earth and the Sun, is considered, especially since the Michelson-Morley experiment, which proved there was no ether, is considered to be just nothing at all. But to suggest how very powerful and important this nothing at all is, let me point out to you that if you didn't have space, you couldn't have anything solid. To begin with, without space outside the solid, you wouldn't know where the solid's edges were. For example, you can see me on the camera because you see a background here and all around me and that background shows up my outline. But if that wasn't there, then you would notice, say, only the beads and the microphone here and this would become the background. But you always have to have a background to see a figure. You just can't do without it. So that means that the figure and the ground, the solid and the space, in some way are inseparable and go together. Now, we find this very commonly in the phenomena of magnetism and electricity. A magnet has a north pole and a south pole, and a battery has a positive pole and a negative pole. There is no such thing as a magnet with one pole only. That's supposing we equate with north, with south, and 
north with is and south with isn't, then we see we can't do without the two of them. You can chop the magnet in two, supposing it's a bar magnet, and you'll just get another north pole and south pole on the end of each piece. And so in the same way, a current will not flow through an electric circuit until the negative pole is connected as well as the positive. Because the current does not wait in the wire like water in a hose and then begin to flow when you, as it were, connect it with the negative pole like turning on the nozzle. There won't be any current in the wire at all until its end point, which is the negative, is established. So what this is trying to get into our basic logic is this, that there isn't a sort of fight between something and nothing. You know the famous words of Hamlet, to be or not to be, that is the question. It isn't. To be or not to be is not the question. Because, as I think I've shown, you can't have a solid without space. And therefore you can't have an is without an isn't, a something without a nothing, a figure without a background. And we can turn that right the other way around and say you can't have space without solid. Because imagine nothing but space. Space, 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 with nothing in it at all forever. But there you are imagining it, and you're something in it. To have the whole idea of there being only space and nothing else at all is not only inconceivable but perfectly meaningless because we always know what we mean by contrast. We know what we mean by white in comparison with black. We know life in comparison with death. We know pleasure in comparison with pain, up in comparison with down. But you will notice of all these things that they must come into being together.